In this tutorial, we will be looking at Python standard types, such as lists, tuples, and dictionaries. We will start with the lists standard type. You can create a list in Python using either li the list function, which looks like this, or you can just use a simple square brackets to create an empty list. Let's create a couple so you can see better how it looks. I'll just create a variable called my list. I'm going to use the function call. Now my list will be an empty list. If we just run it and print it, and there you go. We'll create a second list. Actually, we'll put something in this one. This list has four items in it. And I'll print it out too so you can see that I'm not lying to you. Okay, you'll notice that in this list you can mix types, so it can contain integers, strings. In fact, it can create other. It can contain other types of lists, and other data types such as dictionaries, tuples, and even full-on objects. So, if you create an object from a class, it can also be a list of objects, or a mix of all all the different types. Really, if you want to extend a list, you can do so. Let's take a look. Take this one and use the extend method. And we'll add a couple items to this list. So when you do extend, you, you want to pass it an iterable. In this case, we're going to pass it another list. Now let's see what it looks like. As you can see, it added three more items to the end of the first of the second list that we created. Another way to add items to a list is to just use the plus operator. So let's add some to that empty list that we created earlier. In this case, we'll just add something really simple. One, two, three. And I think I did that wrong. Let's make sure. Yeah, my list is still empty. What we wanted to do was actually use plus equals. One, two, three. Now my list should actually have something in it. Yes, it does. OK. Another fun thing you can do with lists is you can sort them. So let's create an unordered list real quick so we can show you how that all works. Let's see. All right. Most of the time, you'll want to work on a list that's actually sorted, so you just call sort on it. And this should sort the list in ascending order. The other part that we should probably cover is slicing a list. Slicing is actually very similar to slicing a string. So if you go like my list, open the square bracket, zero is the first item in the list, and we want the first uh, two items. So in this case, this will return. Uh, one and two in your list, but not the not the third one. What you have to remember when you're slicing both in strings and in lists is that it always does, starts with whatever integer you use and, and goes up to, but does not include the last integer that you you are slicing. So if we wanted the first three items, we would do zero through three. Well, that sounds kind of intuitive. Zero is actually the first member. So this look. So if you look at it from the zero point of view, you should be returning four numbers instead of three. But this is just something that Python does, and I think C++ also does it this way. Now we can move on to tuples. A tuple can be created using um, regular parentheses. Or using the tuple keyword. Tuples are considered immutable. That means that they cannot be changed after you create them. You might remember from earlier that when you append to a list, the list changes in place. You cannot do this with a tuple. Let's take a look. We'll just create an empty tuple and 
we'll try to add something to it. As you can see, this creates a type error and tells you that you can only can connect tuple to tuple. That's kind of interesting as tuples are considered uh, immutable. Let's find out what's going on here. Let's find out what kind of um, object this is real quick. Look at its identity. And now we'll try creating a new one. All right, let's see if the ID has changed or not. Yeah, as you can see, the ID changed on this tuple when we actually uh, supposedly concatenated them. I believe if you look at the ID of the list and add to it, let's check this real quick. If you add, check the ID to the list that we created, and then we add to that list again. Let's find out what happens. Let's go up and grab this. You'll see that the identity remains the same. So that's just something to keep in mind. Most of the time you don't have to worry about it too much, but um, you will find this useful in certain cases. Tuples can be sliced the same way as lists, and you can cast a list into a tuple or a tuple into a list. Let's look at that real quick so you know what I'm talking about. So let's create a new list from the tuple we just created. You just use the list command and wrap it around your tuple. All right, let's see what happens here. You'll notice that now we have a list because it has square brackets. And you can double check by using Python's handy type call to find out if you actually have a new list or not. As you can see, it says it's a type of list. So we did convert it or cast it correctly. If you want to cast it back, you can just call the tuple command to cast it back into a tuple. Now we can move on to learning about dictionaries. A dictionary is basically a key value pair or a hash table. They are extremely useful in Python and I use them all the time. To create a dictionary, you can use curly braces or the dict keyword. Let's create a one. Usually I use the curly braces. This one's going to have two keys. One thing to note in a dictionary is that the key, which is the first item in the pair, has to be unique in it in the dictionary. You cannot create one, create a dictionary that has the same key in it twice. In fact, it should raise an error. Let's try to do that. Create a bad dictionary. And we'll do this. See what happens. Oh, it worked. I wonder what happened. You'll notice that the second entry of the A overwrit, overwrit the second, the first one. So it didn't actually raise an error, but it did have unintended behavior. You'll have to watch out for this because if you're uh, trying to create a dictionary dynamically, you may end up with a dictionary that is not the way you expect it to be. If you want to access the value in the dictionary, you just have to call it using the square braces. Let's take a look. So let's say we want to access the B element. We just use square braces and put B in, and it entered, and that gives us the value. So that got us the value really, really easily. Sometimes you want to iterate over a dictionary. So we'll go for key in my dictionary. And we'll print out the value. So in this case, we want to just print out the value, get my mouse out of the way. And that will iterate over our AV key in the dictionary, and it will print it out. Another thing to realize about dictionaries is that, that the keys will be unordered. So it doesn't really matter how you add the keys to the dictionary, 
because it's a hash table, it's an order, order, it's unordered, so there is no guarantee what order the keys will be in. If you want the keys to be in a certain order, then you'll need to sort them. In Python 2, you could do something like this. This will return the keys. And you notice that it gives you a dict keys object. In Python 2, what I would normally do at this point was sort them by calling the sort method. But what the? It says attribute error, there is no sort. So to actually sort keys in Python 3, you have to call the sorted method, which is also in Python 2. Of course, this will sort them on the command line, but not actually store them. So let's make this a better example. All right, so now we should have sorted keys, A and B, in a list. So in this way, you can actually loop over it in the correct order. And I'll show you how, because it's not, not necessarily obvious. So for key and keys, instead of key and, and dict keys, and the print should be the same. The difference here is pretty subtle. You need to try this out using a dictionary with more than just two items in it to really see what's going on. But if I were to do this multiple times, you would probably say that B would sometimes print out for first, so you get 2, 1 instead of 1, 2. Um, you can also get just the values. So if you want to iterate over the values, you can call the dictionary's value method. And that will return a dict values uh, type. You can iterate over it in the same manner. We will be looking at dictionary and list comprehensions in a future video, but for now you should be able to get started and use them effectively. Thanks for watching.